Hey everybody, it is time for Word Up Wednesday. I am Becky Winner Williams. <laughs> I'll say my maiden name there. Um, and I am the founder of Full On Purpose. Today we're going to talk about water. Everybody knows that you need water, but how much are you supposed to drink? I've heard several different ways um, that people have explained this. I've heard several different things, different levels, different amounts. So let's just talk about it a little bit today. Um, first of all, water is the... Um, the principal chemical compound, it's going to comprise about 60% of your body. So I've heard several different um, numbers on this, 60, 70, 80%. Um, this reference actually says 60%. This is the cool thing. Every single system of your body is going to need water. All of it. Not just a little bit. Not just because you're thirsty. All of your organs, all of your systems need water to be functioning correctly. Okay, for example, water's going to flush out toxins out of your organs. You know, I'm real big on detoxing and making sure that your body is not holding on to those toxins, um, either from the food, from the environment, um, all those kinds of things, from negative energies, negative uh, emotions, negative people, all those things you know that I'm real big component of flushing that out. So you need water for that. Um, also, it's going to help to carry nutrients to your cells. It's going to provide moist areas um, for your eyes, for your ears, for your nose, for your mouth. You're wanting all those things to be moist, okay? Um, also, it's going to help lubricate your throat. I know I hate when I have a dry throat. It's really uncomfortable. Um, also, it's going to lubricate your skin. So you, if you have a dry skin, you want to make sure that you're drinking lots of water. Um, also your skin, your muscles, and your joints. So if you notice that if you forget to drink water or you don't quite get enough, that you start getting kind of achy and, and um, your joints and your bones start really, you know, hurting and, and not feeling like they're as mobile as they should be. Well, it could just be that you need more water. It could be part of it, okay? Um, without water, we would actually be poisoned to death by our own waste products. So that is does not sound like a good way to go to me. <laughs> Um, every day you're going to lose water through breathing, through doing things like this. When you're talking, um, you're definitely going to be losing a lot of water in, in what you're, you're saying. Um, perspiration, of course. Remember um, that you're supposed to sweat, so you don't want to be using over-the-counter um, deodorants and antiperspirants that keep you from sweating. You don't want to keep those toxins in your pores, especially around this area, because um, that is just asking for trouble, okay? Do your own research on that. Um, I also have a graphic somewhere on this page about uh, deodorant and antiperspirant and about um, the toxicity that a lot of them will hold. So make sure that you do your research before you pick a product for that, because it is very important. Um, also, urination and bowel movement, so you do lose water on both, okay? It's not just urination. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I drink milk or I drink tea, I drink coffee, I drink juice, and it does have some water in it. Does that count as your water count? No. The water count that you're needing for what I'm going to talk about today is pure water, okay? You need to be having a very good source of water. So if, just because it's in something um, doesn't mean that you're getting it. Taking it in fruits and stuff like that is good as well, but I would just make sure that you're getting all that you need by go ahead and actually physically drinking this, okay? Um, also, whenever your kidneys remove uric acid, they must be dissolved in water. So if you're not getting enough water to flush out your kidneys, you're going to probably be seeing some issues going on with that. Um, I know kidney stone, I've never had a kidney stone, but I have heard horror stories about them, about how painful they are, and I know it's not something I want to experience. So drinking water is going to be important to flush out the kidneys, Okay, um, it's also vital for chemical reactions and digestion and metabolism. You know, I talk a lot about digestion. We did a whole four-part series or five-part series, excuse me, on digestion where Dr. Jim Bog Haggerton um, talked about it and went through all the steps of digestion, talked about how to support it, how it works, all of that. Water is a huge, important part of that. Okay, um, also it carries nutrients and oxygens to the cells through the blood and helps to keep your body cool. So it is super duper hot here in Louisiana. Um, I know it's hot other places too, but you need to have enough water taking in that water um, because you're gonna be sweating it out more in the summer, especially um, all the kids going to different camps and stuff like that. You're out a lot more than you're used to probably, so you need to be increasing your water. All right, so how much water do you actually need to maintain a healthy body? Um, it's impossible to tell you that this person, that every single person needs eight glasses of water because eight glasses of water may not be enough for someone who is larger 
um, someone who is male, okay? So listen to this. Suggested water intake is half of your body weight in ounces, okay? So what, however much you weigh, divide that in half, and that's how many ounces you need. For example, if you weigh 180 pounds, you're going to divide that by two. So 90 ounces of water is what you should be taking in daily, actually physically drinking water, okay? This applies for children and adults. So children from age two up need to be drinking half their body weight in water as well. So mamas that have them out at the park and have them playing and they are out and about and full of energy, make sure they're getting enough water that they're not getting dehydrated. Um, so if that's just the normal, okay? So that's if you're just doing everyday activities, uh, just going about your day, going to work, playing with your kids, that kind of stuff. These are going to be some things that you may want to increase your water intake if you are doing any of these things, okay? So exercising, you need to add an additional 20 ounces of water um, to keep your body hydrated. If you are detoxing, so let's say that you're part of my four-day nutritional cleanse that I have going on right now. Um, that's actually going to start tomorrow. And if you're part of that, you need to be increasing your water intake because your body is going to be detoxing, okay? You need to add 20 ounces to your daily intake as well for that. Also the environment, so if it's hot, if it's humid, if you're in a hot house, um, if you're in a heated home during the winter time too, then that's another time that you wanna increase your water. Um, also if you have fever, you're vomiting, diarrhea, bladder infections, urinary tract infections, all those will make your body become dehydrated a lot faster. Um, so you want to make sure to keep as much water going in as possible. I know when you're nauseated, you don't feel like drinking water. I understand that. Um, just do your best to be able to get as much down as you can. Also, if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding, um, remember that's going to be taking nutrients and things out of your body. So you want to replenish that uh, to make sure that you and baby are both getting enough water. So if you are pregnant, this is the Institute of, Medi of Medicine. They advise that pregnant women drink a minimum of 80 ounces. Um, just when you're pregnant, of water. And then women who breastfeed need to consume about 100 ounces of water a day. Okay, so that's what the Institute of Medicine says. So they sound smart, so let's follow what they say. All right, um, let's talk about dehydration. So this is if you don't get enough water, what is going to happen? What's the big deal? So what, what if I don't do it? All right, water is going to make up 80% of your brain. So you need water to think clearly. Okay, listen to this. It's an essential element in neurological transmissions. So to get your brain talking to your body and get it working and processing and doing things that you need to do, it needs water. Okay, picture your brain as like this big old um, water park. Okay, if you, if you go to a water park when it's closed down and there's no water going through it, you're not going to be able to get from the top of the slide to the bottom of the slide and enjoy and have that fun, okay? Think of your brain as the same picture of that. If you're not feeding your body and your brain, which it needs, it's 80% of your brain um, is, is the water and it needs water, okay? So if you are not putting water into your brain, you're basically like a water park with no water. I just came up with that. I can see it. Now it's stuck. Now I'm wanting to drink some water. All right, um, also poor hydration that adversely affects mental performance, duh, because if you're not getting enough water and nobody gets to play on the water slides up there, then yeah, you're not going to have very good performance on that. Also learning ability. Now this is for adults and kids. I know I'm being kind of silly, but think about this for our kids. If we're sending them in the morning, we're giving them sugary cereals in milk, which they may or may not be allergic to. And then you're sending them to school. They haven't had any water. Then they go to school. They don't really get, I know some schools do their best to have a balanced meal, but it's not always the best. Um, not their fault, just, you know, they're following orders, but let's say they're not getting enough, um, water and that kind of thing. I don't know if schools serve water or not. I know Slade school just serves milk. You can get chocolate milk, pink milk, um, regular milk, and they don't have water. So he's not getting water that he would need, but we're expecting our kids to be performing and be A plus students and all this kind of stuff. We're not giving them enough water. So their brain is really struggling to have to grasp all these concepts, especially with Common Core here in Louisiana, it's a little bit harder, it's a lot harder um, than like whenever I was going through school, and we're expecting them to perform, but we're not giving them adequate hydration, so just keep that in mind, okay, um, something that you just, you know, you want to focus on. Memory attention, concentration, all of this can be decreased by 10% due to dehydration. 
Um, symptoms of mild dehydration. So if you think, oh, I'm, I think I'm kind of dehydrated, this is something to look for. You may have tiredness, dizziness, constipation, decreased blood pressure, um, dizziness, fainting, headaches, episodes of visual snow, so you see like little floaters, um, and a feeling like jet lag. Also reduced alertness and the ability to concentrate. Um, so this is just what this reference is saying, that if you have mild dehydration, these may be some things to look for. Do your own research, guys. Whenever you are listening to the things I say on here, don't believe anything that I say. Go and do the research for yourself. Remember, I'm not a medical professional. Um, I just love all things health, and I love being a health advocate, and I do tons and tons and tons of research, but you have the ability to do that as well. So I want you to listen to everything that I say, take it with a grain of salt, and then go do your own research on this stuff. Um, this says signs of severe dehydration is increased thirst, dry mouth, weakness. Um, I've heard from another source that if you are thirsty, you are already dehydrated. Okay, so you should be on top of that. You should never feel thirsty. Um, back to what I was saying here. Let's see, weakness. Um, extreme sleepiness, lightheadedness, especially if you're lightheaded when you stand up, it's worse. That's a sign of being severely dehydrated. Seizures um, on babies, if their soft spot is sunken in, uh, that's something to be watching out for. Feigning, sunken eyes, darkening of the urine, um, or decrease a decrease in urine. So mamas, be watching those diapers, make sure that they're getting enough um, of what, like an average number, I don't know what it is. Go ahead and do your own research, like I said. Um, but make sure that they're having enough uh, pee diapers so that they're, they're having those liquids. Watch your kids, especially the ones that are out and about right now. My kids love to be outside. Be watching. See how frequently they go to the bathroom. Make sure that they are not being dehydrated. Um, also, for your urine, I've heard different um, differing things on here. But I know for what I've most of the resources that I've seen and listened to, they're going to say that if you can read, I know this sounds really weird, but if you can read through your urine, like if it is light enough color for you to read through the through your urine, you're pretty hydrated. Um, you're pretty good. I've also heard that it needs to be clear if you want to be like optimal. Um, I don't know that if that's true or not, so do your own research on that. But most of the resources that I found have said that it, if you can read through it, if it's light enough, then you're good. If it's a real dark urine, you probably need to contact your doctor, especially if you have blood or something like that in it. Um, you need to contact your doctor. Okay? Dehydration can actually be very serious. I know I'm doing a lot of joking today, but it can be very serious and it can be life-threatening. Um, you could also have, like, changes in your body chemistry kidney failure, that kind of stuff. So be very careful with that. Okay, so let's talk about the positive part of this. Ways to perk up your water. If you do not love the taste of water, which me right here, don't love the taste of water, but I know I need to drink it. That's why I'm doing this Word Up Wednesday on it because it's so important. If you don't love the taste of water, I have a couple recommendations for you. First is freshly squeezed organic lemon. Um, I did a challenge about mm, four months ago or so on waking up and instead of drinking coffee first, drink room temperature water with lemon in it. As you're sleeping, your body is detoxing, right? We've talked about this before. So when you wake up in the morning, having that lemon water is going to go ahead and flush your system out first thing in the morning and get you started. And it really does make a difference for you. Um, I notice when I don't do it, when I don't stick to it, when I just grab that cup of coffee first thing in the morning, uh, it does make a difference in my day. Okay, so you can do fresh lemon uh, juice. It's also very beneficial to keep your pH balanced. You can do one drop of peppermint, um, like peppermint essential oil. You could also just have the peppermint leaves if you wanted to put that, excuse me, in your water. I prefer the easy way, and I actually don't have one to show you. Um, I will show you what I use in my water, though, if that's helpful. I use this, which is Young Living's. I know the lighting is really bad. Young Living's Lemon Vitality. Um, this is really good. I don't like just lemon because I do get tired of having that over and over. So I have several different ones that I will either mix or rotate. This one is tangerine and grapefruit and citrus fresh. All of these are Vitality line from Young Living. This one is actually a mixture. It's got orange, tangerine, grapefruit, lemon, and spearmint all in it. So this one's a different taste, but I really like it. It's one of my favorite oils. Um, and then orange. 
And I didn't bring lime in here, but I actually do use lime as well. So those are some other options that you can put. Um, if you are going to put oils, make sure you're using a glass or a stainless steel container. Remember, oils are supposed to take toxins out of your body. So if you're using something like styrofoam or plastic, it is going to start breaking down that plastic. And then basically you're drinking water with oils and broken down plastic. Gross. Don't do that. Get a mason jar. That's what's the easiest for us. Um, or, you know, a super cute stainless steel bottle, whatever your budget affords right now, do that. But don't do plastic, don't do um, styrofoam at all, especially if you're going to put oils in it. All right, also, um, the lady here that wrote this book, she recommends eucalyptus globulus, which is basically eucalyptus that you would think of. Um, she puts that in room temperature water or in hot water whenever she's sick. Like if she's she's feeling like, just the blahs, that kind of stuff, um, she'll put it in. It's the same thing whenever I was younger. My grandfather used to put different things and stuff, uh, salt water, you know, on the stove, and then you put your, your head over the stove with the towel over you so you can have the vapors. It's very similar. Um, you could probably just hold that cup under your nose and just have the eucalyptus going, or you could put it in a diffuser if you have one. Those are all really good tips. So, I think that is it for today. If you have any questions about water, about the intake, or you have any questions about anything that I said today, just let me know. Um, if you have any questions about the oils that I use or um, if they're safe to use, anything like that, I'll be happy to explain why I feel like these are safe to ingest. Um, just send me a message. Also, just one very quick reminder, um, the four-day cleanse that I have, the four-day jumpstart, the Facebook group that I talked about last Wednesday um, at midnight tonight, that goes to $27. Right now it's at 7 for the Word Up Wednesday group that is so faithful and comes every single week and just listens to me ramble on. Um, it is $7 right now. That includes a recipe, uh, several different recipes for the four days. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, and then a shopping list that goes with it. It's broken up. It's beautiful. It's broken up into fruits and vegetables and dairies and not dairies, but uh, fruits, vegetables and condiments, that kind of stuff. So it's pretty easy to whip into the store, get all that you need. Um, but I've also started to upload five more days of recipes that are ones that you can actually switch out. So like one of the recipes calls for quinoa. If you don't like quinoa, I have another recipe that you can switch out for that and still be able to be eating, um, you know, in this natural way, in a healthy way to help your body to reset and jumpstart for a healthier you. So if you are wanting to be part of that, please let me know by today um, because at midnight it is set to jump to the $27 price. Just either leave me a comment here or send me a message through the business page. And like always, I appreciate you and be well. God bless.